welcome. In this video we're going to cover the various parts of the sewing machine. I am using a Genome HD 5000 sewing machine. It is a common sewing machine, but there is various other sewing machines to be used. Let's get started. First we're going to lift up the lid here, exposing the top of our sewing machine. First part we're going to talk about is the spool pin and the spool pin cap. Right here is the spool pin acting as a lever to aid when we are putting our spool of thread onto the pin. Right here is our spool pin cap. This is used to hold our thread onto our spool pin when we are sewing. This goes onto the spool pin. Over here we have our bobbin winder. Our bobbin winder and our bobbin winding tension disc, such a big name for a little part, work together when we are winding our bobbin. The next part we will talk about is the first thread guide. The first thread guide is located right here and is used when we are threading our machine. This part of the sewing machine we will focus on is the take-up lever, located right here. Opening the side of our machine, exposing the take-up lever a little bit more. The take-up lever is an important part when we are threading our machine. Without threading the take-up lever, our machine will not sew. Located on the other side of our machine is our hand wheel. Using the hand wheel, with one full revolution towards yourself, you'll see that the take-up lever has disappeared and reappeared. By turning the hand wheel towards yourself, you are creating an individual stitch. Using the hand wheel can give you more precision when you are sewing instead of using the foot pedal. By using the hand wheel, you can create as many stitches as you would like without losing control. Now we'll talk about the front of our machine. The two dials I'd like to point out are the stitch width and the stitch length. Our stitch width is how wide our stitches are going to be from, another, from one another when we are sewing. This is a great example to use when using zigzag showed in this diagram above. So using moving the dial you can go from 0 to 6 of de determining of how wide you wanted your stitches from one another. As well down here as we have our stitch length and that is how long and how far apart we want our stitches to be. So you can have it zero being really really close to one another or four being very far apart. When we are sewing we like to keep our stitch length at the average size of 2.5. On the side of our machine just below our hand wheel right here is our pattern selection dial. Our pattern selection dial shows us which pattern we are using when we are sewing. So using these pictures above, we have our red line, and when we change our pattern selection, we are also changing which pattern we want when we're turning the handle. By turning the handle, it indicates which pattern we'll be sewing, as well as indicating where we should have our stitch width and our stitch length set at. So if we are using A7 here with this particular design, we need to have our stitch width either between four or between five and six and a half as well as our stitch length it either has to be between half to one so when we are setting up to use this certain pattern selection dial setting we also have to take in consideration our stitch width and our stitch length the next part of the sewing machine we will look at is our reverse lever located here also in a picture is our backwards arrow our backwards arrow is a great indication of sewing backwards. So if you are wanting to create back stitching, which is going over the previous stitch you've created, you are wanting to hold down the lever and continue to sew. Once you release the lever, your thread and your stitching will go forward. Now we will focus on the little details of the sewing machine. The lane is called the upper tension. It is also labeled with an arrow. This is an integral part of when we are threading our sewing machine also including our take-up lever which was pointed out earlier. Getting into the small details of our sewing machine, we have our needle clamp screw which holds our needle into place. It can be loosened, remove the needle, and put the needle, new needle back in and tightened. On the other side of our needle clamp screw, we have our second thread guide, this little lip right here, which, use, which is used to hold our thread when we are sewing. Of course we have our needle, which is right here. At the end of our needle we have an, a hole called the eye of the needle, which we place our thread when we are ready to sew. The next we have our presser foot, which is right here. We have a lever at the back, which you push down on to lower the presser foot or to lift up, and it releases the presser foot. 
Right here we have the throat plate and the bobbin casing with the lower tension. Underneath the presser foot we have something called feed dogs. They look like little teeth, but it uses the motion, a circular motion, to feed the fabric through to the back of the machine. 